All right, so in this set of notes, we're going to learn how to draw Lewis dots for ionic compounds. And um, just as a quick reminder, um, ionic compounds are between metals and a nonmetal. All right, so left side to the right side. Um, in an ionic compound, we form ions because electrons are not shared. Um, electrons are transferred. So electron transfer. So somebody loses electrons, somebody gains electrons. Okay, so ionic compounds made up of ions, uh, metal and a non-metal electron transfer. So um, four things we're going to do. We're going to have three examples, and that's pretty much the notes. So first thing is we're going to draw Lewis dots for each element. So in this first example, we got lithium and sulfur. So if I do lithium, uh, it has got a single electron. All right, because it's an alkali metal. Anything in the first column has one dot. And then um, over here, I'm going to have sulfur and um, it's a chalcogen. So it's going to have six dots around it and kind of wherever you want to put them. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so elements gain or lose electrons in order to get eight, like the noble gas closest to them. So in this case, lithium is going to actually lose its electron to sulfur. And sulfur is going to gain that electron. Okay. So again, um, I might just, I'll highlight it. That electron becomes this electron, okay? So because of that, um, lithium becomes a positive one charge, okay? Um, for the time being, sulfur becomes a negative one because it gained an electron, okay? So lithium lost its one electron. It now looks like helium. It has the same number of electrons as helium. Sulfur, though, notice it has seven. It needs another one. So because I have lithium and sulfur to work with, I'm actually going to draw another um, lithium atom. And um, I'm just going to happen to put it below because it's going to fit nicely here. So lithium, and it has one electron. And essentially, this electron is going to get transferred as well to right there. And I'll just highlight those. So this electron becomes that electron. And now notice this lithium becomes a plus one charge. And now my sulfur, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase that plus one. It becomes a minus two. And from what, we, from what we memorized last unit, that's what sulfur wants to be. Okay. So if we go back and kind of look at um, our examples, uh, number two, show how electrons participate in the bond. So I drew arrows to show that this electron is being moved to, in this case, lithium's electrons are being moved to sulfur. Uh, write the final formula that will result from the bond. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to count up our lithiums. And notice I have two lithiums. Okay, so I'm going to write Li with a little 2. It's kind of like a subscript, or it's not a subscript. It is a subscript, but it's kind of below the line. So Li2, and then I have S. And pretty much in chemistry, we never write a 1. Um, but if you want to, you can write 1S because I've got 1 sulfur, and I have 2 lithiums. Okay, um, last thing on that, metal will always precede nonmetal. So we have metal first, followed by nonmetal when we write formulas. And then lastly, we're going to write the name of the ionic compound. So in this case, I'm going to write lithium. So it's always metal first. And then just what we learned last unit, this is no longer going to be sulfur, but it's going to be sulfide. So lithium sulfide is the name of this compound which consists of two lithiums and one sulfur. All right, so we're going to do the same thing for two other compounds. Um, in this case, we've got fluorine and barium, all right? So I don't know, I'll draw barium, I guess. It, well, it doesn't matter. I'll draw fluorine. So fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, okay? And uh, I'm going to do barium, uh, barium, and it's got two dots. All right, so it looks like because barium has less than four, it's going to lose electrons. And because fluorine has more than four, it's going to gain electrons. So one of barium's electrons is going to get transferred to fluorine. And I'll just highlight it. So that electron is lost. All right, fluorine becomes a negative one. And it's done. It's got its eight. I know its charge isn't going to change again. Barium still has another dot, okay? So it wants to lose another one. So I don't have a place to put it right now, but I can always draw another fluorine. So if I draw another fluorine on this side, okay, ooh, look, fluorine wants another electron. So I'm going to draw that arrow to here. Again, this electron on barium is transferred to fluorine. So fluorine is a negative one charge, and my barium overall is a plus two. 
And again, that matches what we memorized last unit. So the way I'm going to write this, I'm going to write barium first because it's a metal. So I've got one barium and I've got two fluorines. So BAF2, um, I write it barium fluoride. So I name it barium fluoride. I write the formula BAF2. And the name, I change my non-metal so it has an ending with IDE, barium fluoride. All right, one last one and we are done. <clears throat> so I got calcium and I've got oxygen. So calcium has two dots, oxygen has six dots, something like that. All right, so notice um, oxygen wants two and calcium has two. So both these are going to get transferred to oxygen. Again, just arrows are showing that I have transferred an electron from one place to another place. Because calcium no longer has those electrons, it's a plus two ion. Oxygen gained two, so it's a minus two. All right, and I am done. Everybody has eight. Um, the other thing you should notice on all these is my charges should add up to zero. So notice plus two minus two is zero. Up here I've got um, minus one minus one plus two is zero. And on my first example, plus one plus one minus two is also zero. All right, so if I come down here and write my formula, um, I've got one Ca and I've got one O, okay? So one of each, so that's my formula, and it's simply called calcium oxide. All right, so kind of review real quick just what you need to know. Draw Lewis dot for each element, show how electrons participate. So arrows are circles, and we'll see circles next, next lesson, I guess. Write the final formula and write the name. All right, hope that was helpful. Bye.